What's up guys, it's Selaviathan and we are back with another reaction today. Today, we are continuing the brand new anime, Orient. We are on episode 2 today. Now, episode 1 was um, pretty great honestly. Um, You know, it's uh, your basic shonen, so you're always going to have your common basic shonen tropes and things like that. You know, common first episode, hero kind of discovers, you know, his drive or power and, you know, starts to really do something with that. And I really liked the first episode because it ended off on a really good note, you know. Um, quick recap. So um, in their world, it seems as though like um, these um, demons or these godly demons i guess called kishin kind of rained down and kind of um took over took over their country and things like that and like over the years um it definitely kind of um changed in a way where like the kishin kind of rule and people kind of worship them and things like that and it feels like everybody has like a very warped idea of what these demons or kishin things are now there are other onis and things like that that I see that are like less, lesser onis and stuff like that. I'm just gonna call them onis because um, they are demons, that, that's what demon means, but I'm gonna call them onis because that's what the show calls them. So then there's like these lesser onis and then I think there's like a ranking system where like there's higher Kishin and, and all that other stuff. But um, that's what I basically got from the first episode. But we meet Musashi um, and he's a great character, honestly. He, he wants to like kind of liberate the world and become a bushi which is probably a play on words for bushido which i didn't realize in the first episode but um i think it's a play on words for bushido but he wants to be a bushi right and take out all these onis and things like that and him and his friend Kyo kojiro kind of um wanted to become bushis as well like together uh kojiro is actually descendant from from uh bushi like the bushi line and things like that so he's always like um given a, a hard time because of the fact that you know everybody else kind of worships the onis and things like that and it seems as though like kojiro is like kind of ostracized you know it's like yo you're you're a dumb bushi get out of here you know like wear your sword with shame kind of thing uh, which is a really good thing like they make them wear their sh swords so that people can identify them as bushies and things like that and it, it's it's kind of harsh honestly because a sword is meant for pride right but yeah anyway um we see musashi kind of um wanting to become a bushi and you know kyojiro Ch kojiro ca challenged him and said you know like you're, you're just gonna be a minor for the rest of your life or um, whatever so we finally get to see like um kind of what happens where like musashi's about to die and things like that and then kojiro comes in and saves him and then him, him and um musashi kind of now are attacking all the onis and things like that one of the greatest things about the end of the episode was that um a, a mighty kishin is falling down so they're they're ready both kojiro and musashi are about to jump in there and, and get ready to take out this um Kishin, so I can't wait to see that. Um, anyway, we're gonna get started with the episode. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Turn on notifications down below so you know when I upload next. And make sure you check out the Patreon for full uncut reactions of Orient and many other animes and movies and TV shows and a whole bunch of other stuff. Go check it out, won't be disappointed. But without further ado, we're gonna get started with Orient episode 2. Let's go. Oh, they're recapping how he saved him. Bushi no K this. Shkudayo was let a Tamegoro Kuma, but to the mine it up in a side. Yo, this guy was really going through a lot of different type of like racism. <laughs> Honestly. Alright. Let's go see how they're gonna fight this Kishin, man. I'm excited to see what these Kishin actually look like. Cause they definitely don't look like those anus cat monster things. <laughs> Yo, that was only five years ago? How old are these guys? I'm assuming they're like at least in their 20s, but I think they're maybe like 14, 15 years old. <laughs> these guys are young. <laughs> So if you don't if you don't believe in it anymore, why would you come here and help Musashi, I guess? 
I guess he was just trying to help his friend, man. If it, I, I don't even know if he believes in this stuff anymore. That's the Kishin? That's not what I expected. Yo, that's actually mad gross, yo. Ugh. What is this thing? Yo, this is not what I expected a Kishin would look like. I expected it to be like a humanoid type of figure or whatever, but okay, never mind. <laughs> Yo, what is that thing? It ate a little bit of those things and it turned into a crazy ass monster. Yo, what is that? <laughs> ずけて話にならねえ。無駄じゃ。痛いくぞ。無駄じゃ。いつ俺の刀を。貴様は刀を召し上がれ。あいつ。he doesn't be he doesn't believe in any of like the bushi stuff, but he still feels that pride with his sword that he can't let it go. Himitsu I wonder what happened to his father, because we, we didn't see his father in the current timeline. It's possible his father could have died recently or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, see, it, it's a it's a symbol of his pride, man. It's supposed to he's supposed to be prideful and proud of his sword, and that's why he can't let go of it, even if if it is something that he doesn't believe in. So why is the Kishin so obsessed with his sword? What happens if it eats that sword? Like, does it sustain him or something? Like, give him power? <laughs> or did he just do that to be a dick? <laughs> I think he just did that to be a dick. Huh? <laughs> 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 Yo, I kind of like Musashi, man. I don't know. He's like your typical anime um, shonen protagonist, but I don't know. That red hair, it, it, it stands out a lot. Okay, did he just fall in his stomach acid? Because I'm pretty sure Masashi she should be disintegrated by now, man, if he fell in that. <laughs> I, I still don't know how he was able to get out of that Kishin stomach acid and come out unscathed. Like, <laughs> it did not, like, harm him at all. Like, he didn't feel any burning se sensation at all. It's fucking stomach acid, man. <laughs> oh, that's some kind of logic right there, Mike. 
よかったじゃん刀を握ったら実感してきたぜ刀は武士の誇りそのもの俺とお前で最強の武士だよなああやってやろうぜこの赤い鬼神は俺たち武士団の記念すべき初手柄だな yeah, it, it definitely will be man it, it, it's for sure a like mountain that they legit have to climb because it's a gigantic like giant man 武士団です武士団の襲来です武士団だと hold up hold up hold up so I knew it I freaking knew it I was thinking about that last episode because I was like there has to be more bushi out there for sure this is incredible right now I yo it's like a whole mini army just came to come and help them out <laughs> <laughs> Gigantic, crazy demon monsters that also regenerate like crazy. Like, this world is doomed. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> this guy's like, run along to safety now, man. It's okay. Don't worry about this, miners. <laughs> I like that. I like that, man. Once he sets his uh, eyes on a target, man, that's my target, and I like that. Yo, he's like, yo, screw these anus face cat things, man. These Nekomara or whatever the hell they are, man. They're nothing. <笑>変なやつ。さっき俺が避難誘導した子供だ。大将自ら突出しすぎです。秋の農民など捨てておけばよろしい。now Toro, now Tora Takeda. Okay, all right. That guy was in the opening, so he's definitely an important character. Anyway, that was Orient episode two. Good episode, solid episode, honestly. Um, you know, a lot of uh, um, I thought there was gonna be a lot more action, truthfully, and I thought there was gonna be a lot more of um, solo um, Musashi and Kodro kind of taking out the um, the mighty Kishin or whatever, but that really interested me you know last episode was more uh, focused i guess on the reasonings as to why musashi wants to be a bushi but this episode we learned a little bit more as to like we learned um last episode was like musashi a guy who's not a bushi wanted to be a bushi and then this episode kodro a bushi who wants to deny his um heritage or whatever but he starts to learn that like maybe he believes in it a lot more than he than he wants to uh, tell himself you know what I mean like he's telling himself one thing but he believes in in um, the bushy pride or whatever that he has for his sword it was interesting seeing the um, the Kishin the Enko Kojo blah blah whatever I'll, I'll just call it the Enko because I don't know what I forgot what the second part of it was called but that weird chicken thing that um transformed into a gigantic monster that can just regenerate and shit like these things are are crazy the Kishin um, so it's gonna be very interesting to see how the Bushi fight and how they take out these Kishin because um, it, it, it's it's honestly one of the more intriguing things. I want to see what the power system kind of is in this in this show. Um, we, we we in uh, Hinamoto or Hina Hina Motaro Hina Hino 
Moto, I think that's what the place is called. It seems as though the area that Musashi and all of them are in is like a secluded area where there isn't a lot of bushi. But then we saw in the outskirts there was like a, a, a band of bushi that were coming and there was like a whole crew in like a gigantic like flying like tower thing or whatever and you had a bunch of them riding their motorcycles and flying with their swords so that was like a lot of reveals for a power system without any real explanation and um yeah, that's okay um <coughs> sorry just recovering from a cold um it um anyway so we got to see that kind of come in and then the Banabushi came in to kind of um, take over and say, yo, we're going to take out this Kishin. We're going to be the ones who kind of take it over. But then you had Masashi. He's like, no, nah, man, that, that's 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 my prey right there. That like I, I set that uh, I set that prey that my sights on that prey so that I can prove to myself that I'm a Bushi. And I'm not gonna give up on this. And Kojiro was like, you're gonna die, man. And you're gonna get burned up in the fire. He's like, and if I do, so be it. At least I was fighting for the things that I wanted to believe in. And that was one, one cool thing I, I thought about Musashi. Great character, honestly. I'm starting to really grow with him. Kojiro too, like I like him a lot. I like how he he's born into it. Doesn't really wanna be like, be a bushi because of a lot of the things that happened to him in his life but to to feel feel pride with his sword and things like that to the point where he was basically could have died because of his sword getting taken from him um it was it was pretty inspiring honestly but yeah that, that was that was a great second episode honestly um it was great to see i can't wait to see what happens next week don't know where the story is going honestly but um we can expect uh, i guess a typical type of um shonen thing by like episode five six once they finish up all this stuff and, and whatnot and and them kind of being indoctrinated into the bushies and, and things like that but whatever but with that though i will call it a day i will see you guys around i do want to mention thank you guys all for the support that you've been giving me and things like that i know this channel is something that um, I really want to kind of um, keep putting more effort into and keep doing new things and, you know, kind of take as many suggestions as I can as possible. It, it is kind of a bit overwhelming trying to put out as much content as I possibly can, but I'll always try to get some at least a couple of videos out every week so that at least you guys have something to look forward to at, at the very least. But anyway, with that, though, I will see you guys around. Thank you guys all for your support. Salavai, out.